Well, hello. I wanted to take just a couple of uh, quick moments to show you how to accomplish something known as filleting corners in Tinkercad. Now, Tinkercad is great because it's free, it's accessible, uh, it's usable on student devices like Chromebooks. It does not require a software package download or installation, no administrator passwords, uh, those sorts of things. However, because it's free and because it's web-based, it does have limitations. And one of those limitations happens to be the ability to take hard corners, like you see here in the red object, and round them off, okay? Like you see in the turquoise object next to it here on the left. Now, why are rounded corners important? Well, there are a few reasons that I'm aware of. Um, the first is aesthetics. Some people prefer round corners as opposed to hard corners. The second reason is strength of changes of plane on an object. So anywhere you have something like a right angle, like you see in the object on the right here in red, anywhere you have uh, a change of plane. So here, for example, um, you could potentially have a weak point in your in your object. Um, and then the third, which is what's kind of led me down this uh, rabbit trail of trying to figure out how to round or fill at these corners um, is safety. Uh, plastic can be very sharp. If it's printed at right angles or more acute angles, it can be extremely sharp and dangerous if say a four-year-old or two-year-old in your house were to happen to trip and bump their head off of an object like you see here. Now what you're looking at are um, some table couplers. If you look at the project title here, um, what these couplers do is without having to purchase any additional hardware, uh, these connectors allow me to attach two or three IKEA LAC tables one on top of the other. Um, and then I don't have to worry about them shifting or sliding off of each other. And, and what it essentially creates is a nice shelving system, which I'm planning to use for my office printer, my 3D printer, and my Cricut uh, vinyl cutter. Okay, so I designed my base item. If I go ahead and ungroup this real quick, I can kind of give you a sneak peek. I designed my base item, which was just basically an empty box sitting on top of um, another more complicated box with a hole cut in it um, and then I just grouped those two items together but the the hard corners were still bothering me and so I did come up with a way to uh, round these corners off or fillet them I'm going to use the term fillet from uh, here on out in the video in this tutorial okay so to show you how to do that I'm going to jump to a blank workspace okay and the first thing that we're going to do we're going to use all basic shapes here and we're going to create a fillet tool and so what you might want to do is just go ahead and name this. Um, I'm going to name this four millimeter fillet tool. And I'm just going to keep it in my, my Tinkercad library permanently. And I can always go back and uh, I'll show you how to do this later. But I can export this object once it's complete as an STL. And then I can import it into other projects and use it to fill at corners, which is quite cool. So I'm going to start with a basic shape. I'm going to use the roof shape. And the only thing that I'm going to do the roof shape at this point is I'm going to go ahead and stand it up on its end by rotating it 90 degrees. Okay. And then if you look here, you can see it's sitting minus five. So it's sitting underneath the work plane. I actually want to bring it up out of the work plane. There's two ways to do that. You can use the cone, right? Just uh, click and drag, or you could just set this to zero and that's going to drop it nice and flat on the blue work plane here. So that's the first object that we need. The second object that we need is a cylinder hole. So we're going to bring this cylinder hole out. We can see that it's 20 millimeters wide, as is the right triangle. Now, it's very, very important that you don't change the dimensions of this triangle unless you do so um, in a two to one fashion. That is uh, two increments wide by one increment high. Extremely important that we maintain this right angle right here. Okay, and you'll see why a little bit later in the video. Okay, so while I'm zoomed in, I do want to draw your attention to the fact that when you drop a cylinder into a workspace in Tinkercad, you see it's just a bunch of uh, tangent lines connected together to form what essentially looks like an arc, right, or a circle. 
what we want to do is by clicking on our cylinder, uh, we actually want to increase the number of sides of that cylinder to as many as Tinkercad will allow. Okay, so in this case, it's 64. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to align these shapes to each other. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to click on one. There's a couple ways of doing this. We're going to click on one, hold down the shift key, click on the other. Okay, that allows you to be very selective. Let's say we had five objects in our workspace here and we only wanted to select these two. Holding down shift and clicking the ones you'd like to select is a nice way of doing that. Now there are other ways. We only have two objects in our work plane, so I could use Command A on a Mac or Control A on a Windows or uh, Chrome device and that'll select everything in the work plane or you can simply click and drag over top of the items you want to select. Okay, so we want to use our align tool here to only align them center with one another. Okay, we're only going to click this little button here. We want to align them center with each other. That's the only way we want to align them for the, for the time being. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to use this hole, this circular hole, and we're going to cut some of this material out of this triangle, but it's not going to be perfect. You'll see we're going to have to come back and touch it up a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on the work plane tool here. And we're going to bring this out to our workspace. And you can see it's sitting flat on the blue work plane right now. Now, if I put it up against this, this sphere, you can see it rotates around the faces of this sphere. We actually want to put it on what was the bottom of the roof. And watch what this does. It's going to change our reference plane to the bottom of this roof or this triangle. So what we want to accomplish next by clicking our cylinder hole or selecting it is we actually want to sync that cylinder. You can see I grabbed this, I call this the cone right here. We're going to grab this cone handle and we're just going to push or sync that cylinder down into this roof. Okay. And that minus six, right? You see this reading right here. Minus six looks to be pretty good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch my work plane back to the original blue work plane. Okay. Now we haven't cut this positive material out yet because what we need to do is we need to take these two objects and we have to group them together. Okay. Now you'll see, as I told you, we're a little bit imperfect here. You can see we have two pieces of this roof or the triangle still left over. Now it's not as easy as clicking on one of those pieces and hitting delete or backspace. It doesn't work that way. If you do that, it's going to delete this entire piece, all three pieces here. So what we have to do is we have to use another hole in order to get rid of those pieces. So we're going to bring a, a box hole out and we're going to increase its width and its height so that we know we're catching all of this, this excess here, okay? And because I'm annoyed when things aren't aligned, this isn't necessary, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna align my box hole and what remains of my roof. I'm just gonna align them center. And then we're gonna come back to the old work plane tool and we're going to set it right here on the flat remnant, which was the bottom of the roof. And we're going to take this box and we're going to sink it into this work plane enough so that we get rid of these two remnants of the roof, but none of this. We want to keep all of this intact. Okay. So let me grab my work plane tool. We'll go back to the original blue work plane. We'll select all and we'll group those together. And now we've gotten rid of those remnants. And now what you're left with here is the piece that you want to keep. Okay. So this is now going to be your fillet tool. And I'll show you how it's going to serve as a fillet tool in just a minute. We're going to go back to that Ikea project I was working on. So the beauty of this is we now have a scalable piece. If you hold down the shift key on your keyboard, 
and you grab one of these corners and you drag, you can make as big or small of a fillet tool as you'd like. So I'm going to go down to about, uh, what did I do here? I think I goofed something up. Let me redo. Click. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to scale this down to about four ish millimeters if it'll let me. We'll go four, now nah, we'll go three, there it was, four. All right, so if I look on top, it is nice and uniform, the arc's nice and uniform, we've maintained our right angle. Um, what I can do is actually, I can make this taller without proportionally scaling it out. Um, so let me jump back to my other project here real quick. You can see my overall height of this connector is 82 millimeters. So why don't we go ahead and we're just going to make this, um, we're going to make it 84. We're going to oversize it because we want it to sit above and below all of the positive space that we want to delete in the, in the project um, in my other web tab here. Okay, so we're going to call this, as I've already done, the 4 millimeter fillet tool. We're going to leave it just as is, and we're going to go ahead and export it as an STL. Now, if we come into our workspace, and I'm going to do us a favor, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to delete this object so that there's less jamming up the uh, work plane here. Okay. And I'm going to rotate this around so that we're looking at this back corner. Okay, this is the most important one for me to fill it on the whole project because it's going to be the most exposed corner, the most exposed spine of the connector. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import this four millimeter fillet tool that I just created. And we want it scaled to 100% because we know that our dimensions were the same. You can even check them down here. Okay, it's two by four. There's that one to two ratio. Uh, it's 84 high and we're going to click import and of course it's going to drop it right inside of the box so it's not easily visible so now that we've imported it you can see that it's sitting zero relative to the blue plane all i want to do is drop it minus one millimeter below so that tells me that this purple object and i'm actually going to change the color so it's easier to see this object is going to sit one mil one millimeter below the zero point and one millimeter above the highest point because remember we made it 84 and this is 82 okay so now what we have to do is we have to hold down shift and we want to rotate this so that these corners are the same okay you see that now here's the trick once rotated, once resized, once adjusted, um, what we actually want to do is we want to take this solid object, which is yellow, and we want to turn it into a hole. Okay, because what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and it's going to subtract from positive space. And then we're going to click on it, and we're going to click on our connector, and we're going to use our align tool, back corner, back corner, we're going to do a quick check to make sure it's going to cover all that space. And before we do that, because we have three other corners that we probably are going to want to fill it to, um, we're going to duplicate this. So I'm going to hold, I'm going to use the command D uh, keyboard operation that duplicates that item because what I'm about to do is I'm about to group it and round that corner off. Check that out. Okay, so we now have a round corner as opposed to a hard corner, okay? So if we come up here, um, it's obviously not going to work because we've got to rotate this around and then align here and here. Same thing. We're going to go ahead and group. Oh, what was my mistake? I didn't duplicate it before I grouped it. Therefore, I didn't have one to use on my next corner. All right, so I just undid and duplicated there. So let's group. OK, 
Okay. And you guessed it. We've got to rotate this one again. Okay, and we're going to align here and here. Nope, couldn't see it there. We're going to align. There we go, here and here. And before I group, I want to duplicate. Command D or Control D if you're on a Windows or Chrome device. So I want to select these two, group them together. And last but not least, we'll hit this last corner and we'll be done. I have found that grabbing this rotate handle is difficult sometimes. Again, this is just this whole filleting process is something that is so much easier in Fusion, but not everybody has access to Fusion. So there and there. We don't need to duplicate that one because we are done. So there you go. We've got a nice round piece to use as a connector. I don't have to worry about taking my kids to the emergency room if they fall and crack their head off of it because it now has a nice round filleted corner. So that is all. Hopefully that was informational. Hopefully uh, you've got a bunch of fillet tools saved in your library once you learn how to do this. Um, or you can just use this one and scale it on an as-needed basis by holding down shift and dragging one of the handles. So that is all. Hope this was informative. Thanks for your time.